2023 was the first full year of the James Webb Space Telescope. And in that time, it has dazzled scientists with its images and findings, opening up the universe in a way never before possible, and along the way providing answers to long-standing questions, as well as stirring up questions we never thought to ask, bringing us closer to ever to the Big Bang and the origins of our universe. But that was last year. It's 2024, baby, out with the old, in with the new. James Webb, more like Spain's bleb. That makes no sense. The James Webb Telescope was first conceived in the early 90s. We didn't even have smartphones back then. The internet barely existed. We still got around on horses. People had tails. It was a different time. So surely the telescopes we've conceived since then have even more potential to blow our minds and bring even more of the universe into focus for us. Quite literally. So let's take a look at the next generation of telescopes and see how they might change our perspective on the universe. So a lot of what I'm gonna talk about in this video is unfortunately a long way away. Like I just said, these things take a long time to develop and some of these are just kind of in the concept stage right now. But they're exciting to talk about when you consider what JWST is doing with 90s technology. Yeah, I know the technology evolved along with it. It's not running on 90s technology. But the point is the technology has evolved to this point now that we can conceive of doing things that they couldn't have even conceived of doing when JWST was first thought of. Let's start things off by looking at the Habitable Worlds Telescope, or HWO. Simply put, the Habitable Worlds Observatory, or HWO, will be the new hotness in space telescopes when it launches in the late 2030s or early 2040s. What will make HWO special is its focus on finding Earth-like exoplanets and imaging them in visible light. Now, if that sounds familiar, it's because the same has been said of other proposed uh, successors to JWST. Um, Dr. Becky, friend of the channel, did a video about the Carl Sagan Observatory about a year ago. Um, we were going to cover that here, but really not a lot has changed on it since then. HWO will take pictures in the visible light spectrum, similar to the Hubble Space Telescope, and it will inherit the concepts pioneered by two other telescope programs, the Habitable Exoplanets Observatory, or HABEX, and the Large Ultraviolet Optical Infrared Surveyor, or EUR. The details of what HWO will look like and exactly what technologies it'll have are still being worked out, but one thing already looks certain. HWO will be amazing at finding Earth-like habitable worlds. In 2022, NASA confirmed that more than 5,000 exoplanets have been found, but do you know how many of those planets are thought to be habitable? As of January this year, anyway, a total of 63. The mirror, or set of mirrors, that makes up the aperture on this could be twice the diameter of that on JWST. They'll give HWO unprecedented ability to image near-Earth objects. If aliens are hanging out on Pluto, we'll be able to see their mobile homes. We'll also be able to watch geysers erupt on icy solar system worlds, image objects in the Kuiper Belt, and make a dedicated search for Planet X. Exactly how this will be achieved is in development, but the vision is clear. From exo-Earths to Pluto RVs, the future looks bright for anybody with an interest in alien life. But you might be wondering, why are we even talking about a new telescope so soon? I mean, we, we just got JBST up there. Well, the simple answer is because these things take time. Like Hubble, for instance, it was conceived in 1946. It took 44 years to launch. We hadn't even launched anything into space in 1946. And the guy who wrote the paper that got NASA thinking about this kind of thing in the first place was Lyman Spitzer Jr., hence the Spitzer Telescope. JWST didn't have quite that long of a run up to launch, but it came close. A telescope like it was first discussed in 1989, which was actually a year before the launch of Hubble, and four years after the launch of the syndicated sitcom, Small Wonder. She's the small wonder, lovely and bright and soft girls. She's a small wonder, a child unlike other girls. She's a miracle. On December 25th, 2021, JWST launched aboard an Ariane 5 rocket. Despite initial reports that it had collided with some reindeer, it made the one and a half million kilometer trip over the next 29 days to its final destination at the L2 Lagrange point, and six months later, it was ready for first light. Suffice it to say, nobody at NASA wants to delay their next huge project any more than they have to. Um, in addition to a ton of work hours, JWST massively overran its budget, which is something else NASA wants to avoid in the future. 
I started work on HWO in 2021 and have set a budget at $11 billion, which is about what JWST actually cost. But wouldn't not building a telescope be cheaper? I mean, sure, but this is where we need to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of JWST. Compared to what's come before, JWST's 6.5 meter aperture is huge, but it's not the limit of what we could take up in a rocket. JWST's focus on near and mid infrared light gives it the ability to see through clouds of dust that have obscured astronomical details in the past. Uh, but that's not to say that the infrared is the only region of the electromagnetic spectrum worth observing. Um, say it's, it's no good if the thing that you want to see is the dust, for example. For another, there are chemical elements that are easier to detect by breaking down visible light. This is important if you're looking for Earth-like atmospheres, which are rich in these elements, and there also is the whole thing about, you know, seeing how astronomical objects would look to our own eyes. You kind of want to know what it actually looks like. Like, don't get me wrong, the images we're getting from JWST are amazing. I, I don't care that it's false colored. But when you're talking about imaging Pluto or an exo-Earth somewhere, yeah, I'd like to get as close to the real thing as possible. Anyway, if HWO turns out similar to the proposals for the Carl Sagan Observatory or Louvoir, it'll be able to take pictures with staggering detail. As Dr. Becky explained in her video, which you should definitely go watch, an orbital telescope with a 12 meter aperture would be able to make images so sharp it would be able to pick out Earth and Mars in a picture taken 27 light years away. So, for example, Proxima Centauri is much closer than 27 light years, so is Tea Garden Star B. This is pretty exciting because according to the University of Puerto Rico at Arecibo, there are 11 known exoplanets closer than 27 light years away that are potentially habitable. And that's a conservative sample. A more optimistic sample added four more. I mean, just think about the pictures HWO could take of those. And think of the new worlds it could image in its first year. I mean, the overall count of exo-Earths is expected to grow by a factor of five, and that's without HWO. There's no doubt we'll see amazing things with this. There's also some new innovations that NASA plans to bring to HWO that spin directly out of the JWST experience. Like one of the things about JWST that made it such a nail biter as it was launching was the fact that there's no way to service it like we could always do with Hubble since it's so far away. Well, HWO will also go to L2, but this time, NASA plans to service it with robots. Yeah, evidently the distance to L2 isn't exactly the problem. The problem really is that JWST is just such a complicated piece of machinery, but NASA's building HWO with serviceability in mind. And who knows, maybe by the time NASA sends a robot out to do HWO maintenance work, they'll have figured out how to patch JWST as well. And it will need patching. Like remember the micrometeoroid that struck James Webb in this last year? Well, HWO would be able to survive that. Now another innovation that they want to include is something that they kind of took from the HabX concept, and that's a star shade. Uh, the one in the illustrations that you see is a kind of a flower petal looking thing that's designed to block uh, specific wavelengths of light. I've talked about it in a video here before. Starshade, however, might not be serviceable, so it may or may not be a part of the whole thing. Now, you might be wondering which launch vehicle will send up HWO on its journey. Now, obviously, Starship is a leading candidate. It should have the capacity, considering that HWO is going to be about twice the size of JWST. The Ariane 5 rocket that carried up JWST had a payload fairing with a usable length of 16.19 meters and a maximum diameter of 4.57 meters. Starship's fairings can be up to 22 meters long and 9 meters in diameter. Of course, Blue Origin's new Glenn could be a competitor too. It has fairings 20.9 meters long and 7 meters wide. So, it's got a chance. But the contender to beat is NASA's own space launch system. The 27.4 meter long fairing is impressive, though the diameter is slightly trimmer than Starship's at 8.4 meters. There are sources that say, though, that SLS fairings could grow as wide as 10 meters around. Of course, size isn't the whole story. There's also financial considerations. Uh, for example, at JWST, ESA provided the launch vehicle, which saved something like $850 million for NASA. With that in mind, I'll mention the Ariane 6, Europe's upcoming rocket. Uh, it'll be a little bit skinny, with a fairing 20 meters long, but only 5.4 meters in diameter, but still it's a contender. Now, keep in mind, we're talking about a telescope that may not see light for another 20 years. So who knows what rockets or rocket technology will be around by then. Now, I know 20 years is a long time, uh, but don't worry, space geeks will have plenty to talk about in the meantime. Just to mention some of what's coming down the pipeline in telescopes, in 2026, ESA plans to launch its Plato satellite to Lagrange Point 2. Plato will focus on finding exoplanets and exomoons. That's cool, because exomoons don't get that much attention, despite the efforts of the Coral Worlds Lab here on YouTube. Good for them. Back on this side of the pond, the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope is due to launch in 2027. It'll be an infrared telescope with a similar design to Hubble, but a hundred times greater field of view. It will, quote, delve into the mystery of dark energy, according to NASA, and is expected to image light from over a billion galaxies. And it's thought to find 2,600 exoplanets during its five-year mission. 
On the ground, we have the Giant Magellan Telescope to look forward to. With an aperture of 25.4 meters, it will have four times the resolving power of JWST, though it won't be able to see some of the same frequencies that are absorbed by Earth's atmosphere. Still, the location in the Atacama Desert is about as dry and clear as you can get, so the images from the Giant Magellan should be stunning. And then there's the 30 meter telescope that was being built in Hawaii and has been stalled due to protests. The site's on the Mauna Kea volcano, which is sacred to the local people. If an agreement is reached or another location is chosen, the 30 meter will offer brilliant views of the universe in ultraviolet, visible, and infrared light. But it won't be the largest telescope ever built. That distinction will go to, guess, the extremely large telescope. With a 39.3 meter aperture, its record is unlikely to be broken anytime soon. Like Giant Magellan, ELT is in Chile, and like the Nancy Grace Roman Telescope, it'll probe dark energy. It'll also look for exoplanets and molecules of water and extrasolar protoplanetary disks. At the time of this video, ELT's construction is about halfway complete. It's expected to be finished in 2028, and I hope to be back here to talk about it and show its first images. And hey, if YouTube is still a thing when HWO launches, I'll meet you back here to talk about that too. It's really exciting to think about how these telescopes are going to expand their understanding of the universe. We just have to wait a few decades for them to get here. But if you want to expand your understanding today, my friend, you've got to check out today's sponsor, Brilliant. Like if you're into telescopes and astronomy, maybe check out the gravitational physics course, which explains everything from ocean tides to redshifting to home and transfer orbits. So you can go from space admirer to steely eyed missile man. Brilliant uses interactive puzzles to teach you at a much, much deeper level. You won't just know what they are, you'll know how they work, how we discovered them, and you'll learn it in a way that makes sense to you so you can apply those concepts to other areas of your life. Best of all, when a friend says something wrong about black holes in a conversation, you can not just tell them they're wrong, you can tell them why they're wrong. It's just, oh, it's such a good feeling. Brilliant has courses in computer science, probability, data analytics. There's new courses all the time. In fact, there's a new course on LLMs, so you can understand all these AIs on a more fundamental level. Brilliant is great. You can download lessons and take them with you. So even if you're stuck in a cave with no reception, you can still get smarter. And if you want to give it a try and see if you like it, you can get 30 days for free when you sign up at brilliant.org slash answers with Joe. And if you're one of the first 200 people to click over from this video, you'll get 20% off the annual plan. I mean, why not? It's as fun as playing any game on your phone and you'll get smarter in the process. So brilliant.org slash answers with Joe, links down in the description. All right, thanks so much for watching and a big shout out to the answer files on Patreon and the channel members who are helping to support this channel. Just being awesome in the community and, and just, I just, I can't thank you guys enough. There's some new members I need to shout out real quick. We got Joe Swedbeck, Chad Weeks, Robert Slaked Home, uh, Hot Rod Mike, Eric Stewart, Mike Gates, Jay Francis Fisher, Haley Brown, Mrs. L, and DJ Audible. Uh, thank you guys so much. If you would like to join them and get early access to videos and get access to exclusive live streams and get a little cool, like a uh, little button next to your name in the comments that makes you stand out, makes you cool than everybody else, just hit that little join button down below. If this is your first time here, I will link right here to maybe one of my previous JWST videos, if maybe you need to get caught up on that a little bit, uh, or look at the, the sidebar over here if you're on your computer and any of those thumbnails that have my face on them or have my name on them, uh, give them a click, see if you like them. And if you do and you're not subscribed, I invite you to subscribe. I come back with videos every Monday. And I think that's it for now. You guys go out there, have an eye opening rest of the week. Stay safe and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.